Hey folks, my name is Jason and this is Old Car Guy. If you are new to the channel, well, you're in luck because this episode is going to be a reflection on 2020 and what happened on my channel. If you see something that you like, don't be afraid to go down there and hit that subscribe button and uh, give this video a like because we're trying to grow our channel and we're trying to set new goals for 2021 for this channel to see things grow and get bigger and be able to provide you guys with a lot better content. So having said all that, let's take a look at 2020. Today, we're gonna to work on getting this rocker panel tacked into place. Today, we're gonna to work on getting this patch panel. Today, we're gonna to work on getting this rocker panel tacked into place as well as maybe the inner structure and we'll see how far we can get on the cab corner. We've got to take this and turn it into this using this. So stay tuned. Let's start caulking. Yep, that's what we're doing. Here I am just showing you a finished coat of the buckskin color on this truck. If you've been following along till this point, you know that we've got the rocker panels and cab corners done. If you're new to the channel, well, we did rockers and cab corners on this truck and I taught myself how to weld. And here's a close up look at everything that we're gonna need for our drop kit in the rear. Now this is a six inch drop kit, so we've got our drop shocks, U-bolts and brackets. We've got our notch kit, we've got our axle, locator thingies, bag of hardware, instructions, and a template so we know where to cut the holes for our notch kit. Well, that's one cut frame for sure. So we've got our C-notch in place. We've got to clamp down with some vice grips. It ain't going anywhere. We've got all of our quarter inch pilot holes drilled. Now we're gonna go back with the half inch that way we can get some hardware into it and then this uh, this side of the c-notch will be done so i guess one thing i can say about the belltech drop kit for the rear here is that the instructions for the most part are super easy to follow Well, there you go guys the front end is lowered at least four inches in the front all set up there is basically a wax so we've got to wait for it to haze up and then we can go and clean that off man oh man what a difference that is as smooth as a baby's bum well at least till you get down to the scratches and stuff but man that is some shiny I'm not sure if the camera does it any justice or not but let's move over here to the side that I didn't do yet and like I said before you look at the how sharp the images are on those lights and then you come over here and talk about a difference. I am super impressed 
and excited. I cannot wait to get the rest of this truck done. Now that is a brand new truck. You guys can let me know down in the comment section what you think. Do you like this look or would you sooner have it patinaed? Well, maybe you'd sooner have a completely new paint job. Let me know down below. So here is a table full of basically all the hard parts, uh, or most of them anyways, of what we had sent away to St. John Engine Rebuilder, and uh, I'll put their logo on the screen as well as a link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's take a look at the new small block Chevy for Project Dale. installed 100% into our square body truck. I think it is just about perfect for this truck. It's comfortable and if anything it's kind of leaning back maybe a little bit more based on the fact that I the way I welded those brackets but it's comfortable. I, I feel like uh, I could take off anywheres and uh, not have to worry about fatigue in this truck. to start on the passenger side here now and he's all done on the driver's side let's go over and take a peek and see how it turned out and there we are folks we've got the uh, kind of the tan color we've got a little bit of design in here and we've got the white stenciling around the outside and I think it stands out just perfect it's not too much and like I said when we're done after this is dried for a day or so we'll come back with the buffer and we'll kind of age that up a bit but I'm really impressed with how that turned out and I hope you guys can see that as good as I do. And uh, there's your problem. That son of a gun's hot. But there's your problem. The Grey Goose is back. Okay, so let's get this thing dug out of the box. So this is our 650 CFM Edelbrock AVS2 and they call it a Thunder Series. Hey, 
Okay, try her again. Take a while for this one to fill up. Go ahead. be doing today is we're going to be unboxing the sponsorship package from Forever Sharp Steering Wheels. That feels awesome. So there we have it folks we've got our new Forever Sharp Steering Wheel installed on the old Chrysler. All I got to do is go under the hood, hook up the horn button and we should be good to go. Well good morning guys and welcome back to another episode of Old Car Guy. Today we're doing some Panther platform stuff. So you're going to want to stay tuned. For those of you who don't know, I have a 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis that is all stock. So we're going to put this track lock 327 gear rear end uh, into old grandma. You see, I may or may not have bought another Grand Marquis. So there she is, and we will meet it out to the garage. This is my 2003 Mercury Grand Marquis that we call Black Jack. Let's take a look. The whole purpose of retorquing is to make sure that the initial tightening stays tight. What tends to happen is, especially if you're switching wheels from winter to summer, which we do a lot here in Canada, um, they'll tend to back off a little bit or they'll relax and your lug nuts will become loose. And then today, this happened. You can see that the studs are all grooved up. All five have marks on them to the point where they could have sheared off and I could have lost my wheel. Here's a better look at the wheel that the tire was on. All those holes, those lug nut holes, have been ovaled out because this was wobbling around on those lug nuts. And you look at the, the lug nuts and even they are all chewed to pieces, all five of them. Justin wants to try it out. We can all go in the van. We all could go in the van, we see? We can all go in the van. <laughs> Let's do that. I mean, we can probably just... No problem, kid. 
kids. Let me know when you're ready to come back from soccer practice. So, I think it's time to shave the beard. Let's do it. Lord help me. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, this is it. This is Jason, babyface, au naturel. Hey, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got one goal in mind, and that's to take Blackjack and jump it over this little mound here. And let's make it happen. <laughs> We've come to the conclusion that we are getting air. It's hard to see with the eye, but when we reviewed the footage, we are actually getting air. Because if you look here, this is your traction tire, and it stops kind of breaking traction and just barely glides over the snow right here. This is your front tire right here. It leaves the ground. You can see there's no tire tread in front of it. And I would be remiss if I did not tell you guys about the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. It is a weekly live stream that myself and Grant Tommy, who is straight Six Fan, I'm going to put his link right here, that we do. It's a uh, automotive talk show, and we have uh, guests, and we had several big names uh, come into our live studio over the past year. So why don't we take a look and see who graced our presence on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. And because we want to have fun here once in a while, don't forget the time that Scotty Kilmer, as well as Doug DeMiro, paid us a visit to the channel. Take a look. As you all know that over the last 50 years or so, I was a mechanic, and because I was a mechanic for 50 years, I figured it was probably time to retire and go on this whole YouTube thing and see if I can fill people full of bullcrap because of my biased opinion on Toyota. But at the end of the day, when I was a mechanic, I really didn't do a very good job anyways because all I was able to do was sit and talk to the car and, and my, I just couldn't control my hands, so I couldn't hang on to any tools. I, I couldn't work and, and, and pull plastic apart on these new cars because they're all made of plastic. <laughs> this is a 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis LS. I'm going to review this 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis LS, we're going to take you through some of the quirks and features of this Mercury Grand Marquis, then we're going to take it for a drive, and then we're going to give it an old car guy score. Now you'll notice on this particular model, it has the color matched grille with the Mercury logo. This particular model is the grandma edition. And although this car is discontinued, it will still live on in the lives of guys like me who just want rear wheel drive, V8 powered, four door sedan semi luxury. <laughs> now, we will be doing a few more of those in 2021. In fact, I've got a few lined up and a few scripts kind of already put together. So stay tuned for some more special guests coming to the channel for a parody episode on uh, Old Car Guy. So guys, that is it. That's what 2020 brought us. It wasn't all bad. The channel grew, and we started off 2020 with, I think, approximately around 2,200 subscribers. And as of the recording of this, we're pushing 5,900 subscribers. 
I said at the beginning of this video, we were gonna be setting some goals for 2021, and I'm gonna set them a little high. We did very well as far as subscriber count goes. We did not reach our 500,000 view count, but we're very close. We're within about uh, 18,000 views of that. So we're very, very close. And hopefully within a few days or weeks, we will meet that 500,000 goal. So for 2021, it's very simple. I want to reach 21,000 subscribers by December 31st next year. And hopefully when I'm sitting here talking to you then, we will be there. And I'd like to see at the very least about a million views. Shouldn't be too bad considering where we are right now. And if we get that 21,000 uh, subscribers, shouldn't be any problem at all. So guys, if it wasn't for you, this channel wouldn't exist. You guys keep watching, you guys keep commenting down below. You tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Uh, you guys aren't afraid to uh, pick me apart sometimes. And that's what I like, I wanna hear from you guys. Um, you know, we, we couldn't have done it, uh, certainly without the views and without the help of uh, guys like uh, Grant Tommy uh, with the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, who has been pretty well with me, uh, you know, on this whole YouTube growth journey ever since almost the beginning. And guys like Luke from Coastal Auto Reaction, uh, who has kind of taken me under his wing, so to speak, and uh, wanted to, um, you know, grow the hashtag CNC, which is community, not competition attitude between all the uh, YouTube creators out there. We're going to be doing some collaborations this year. We're hoping to get some travel in as long as this whole pandemic thing uh, doesn't put a damper to that. But if we don't, well, we'll continue on the path that we're on. So again, if you liked what you saw and you want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to hit that 21,000 subscriber goal. And if you liked this video, again, hit that thumbs up. Don't be afraid to share with your friends what Old Car Guy has to offer here on YouTube. And we'll be making memories for 2021. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. Let's get this done for 2021. And we will see you in the next video.